Now in the case when we have both translation and rotation, we call these general transformation operators, the translation and rotation of vectors on the same frame. This is the general case. If you look at this graph here, we have frame A, which is the only frame we have. And I want you to look this at step by step. It gets a little more complicated, but please follow me on the steps. We have P1 here, that's point P1, defined relative to frame A by P1 relative to A. That's the red line right here. Okay. So first thing we do is we translate this line along Q relative to A, along this line. Okay, until it reaches this green line that's marked with P1 relative to A right here. Okay, so I took this line, the way it is, we translated it straight along this Q relative to A until it reached this position. Okay, then after the translation, we rotated this line about an axis, whatever general axis, can be axis A or B or C or K or, you know, whatever. Uh, and that rotation about the axis was by theta degrees. Okay, so basically this line now moved from being in this orientation into being in this orientation, which is shown in gray. Okay, so that would be my final line. And that would result in another point called P2 right here. Okay, so the first step is we had the definition of P1 relative to A right here. Then we translated this line along Q relative to A that resulted in this green line, still P1 relative to A. And then we rotated this line about axis K, whatever this axis may be, uh, about that axis by theta degrees right here. And that resulted in this gray line. And that gray line here defines uh, P2 uh, or makes that point P2. Okay, and now what we need to do is we need to define P2 relative to frame A, which makes that blue line. Okay, P2 relative to frame A. Okay, in this case, again, we have a rotation portion and translation portion. We have two terms. So P2 relative to A equals to the rotation about K axis. Again, K axis can be any axis, including X or Y or Z or any other axis. Rotation about k axis by theta degrees, so that's a rotation matrix, multiplied by P1 relative to A, which is this vector right here. Plus, the second term is Q relative to A. That's the translation vector Q relative to A that's shown right here in red. Okay, Where k is the rotation axis and theta is the angle of rotation, and Q is the translation vector. Now, to simplify the equation for easier use later, we can use again the uh, homogeneous transformation matrix, T. So what we can do, similar to what we did earlier, we can put the transformation matrix here that represents the rotation about K by theta degrees. That's a 3 by 3 rotation matrix. And then Q relative to A, that's a 3 by 1 vector, translation vector. And then here we have standard 0, 0, 0, 1. So that's the 4 by 4 transformation. Now, if we multiply this directly with P1 relative to A, that would not be consistent because P1 relative to A is a 3 by 1 vector. To make it a 4 by 1 vector, we can just add 1 here to the bottom. So that makes this vector 4 by 1. And that would make a consistent dimension to be multiplied by a 4 by 4 matrix. Okay, so 4 by 4 times 4 by 1, that's consistent. And that would give me a 4 by 1 matrix that represents P2 relative to A and 1 at the bottom. Okay, so we can use this as simplified. So P2 relative to A and 1 equals to transformation matrix times P1 relative to A and 1. Okay, again, if we decompose that equation right here, if we decompose it or multiply these two, uh, the, the the matrix and the vector together, then we can get back to our original equation, which is this equation, which is also this equation. Okay, so Rk of theta 
times P1 relative to A. That gives me RK theta times P1 relative to A plus Q relative to A times 1. That's plus Q relative to A. Okay, that finishes this. Now we go here to the last row, which is 0, 0, 0 times P1 relative to A. That gives me a 0. And 1 times 1, that gives me a 1, which is defining 1 right here. Okay, so this is a simplified way of uh, finding that uh, relationship and doing that operator using the homogeneous transformation matrix. Now let's take an example here on the general transformation operators. Uh, vector P1 relative to A is rotated relative to frame A about Z axis by 30 degrees and translated 10 units in XA and 5 units in YA. Define the transformation matrix T, then find P2 relative to A if P1 relative to A equals to 3, 7, and 0 transpose. Now to start here, we're going to first start by defining the transformation matrix. Uh, since it says here that the rotation is happening about z-axis by 30 degrees, that means we know that the rotation is about z-axis and it's by 30 degrees. Okay, so the rotation portion here, the 3 by 3, since it's rotation about z, that means this element is 1 and everything in the same row and column would be zeros. And then we have cosine, negative sine, and sine and cosine of 30 degrees. Okay, we can put them in terms of cosine and sines, or we can find the numerical values and put them here in the uh, rotation matrix. So that defines the rotation matrix portion of the transformation. Now, if we come to the translation portion of the transformation, that's Q relative to A, and it's given here as 10 units in XA and 5 units in YA. So that's 10 here and 5 here. Since there's no mentioning of ZA, that means we put it as 0. And then the last row is a standard 0, 0, 0, and 1. Okay, so that makes my 4 by 4 transformation matrix. Now I'm ready to define P2 relative to A. So P2 relative to A, and I put one here for consistency, equals to the transformation matrix that I just found here, times P1 relative to A, and one here also for consistency. Okay, this transformation matrix is four by four multiplied by this vector, which is four by one, and that would give me this vector, which is also four by one. Okay, so I substitute here the transformation matrix, and then P1 relative to A is given right here, three, seven, and zero, three, seven, and zero. And this is the one that I have in here. And that would give me this answer, 9.098, 9 uh, 9 12.5620, and 1. To find my final answer, I just take the first three elements and disregard the last element, which is 1, and that will give me P2 relative to A. Okay? And that would be my final answer right there. Now let's take an in class exercise. I want you to solve this on your own. A uh, vector P1 relative to A is rotated relative to frame A about X axis by 45 degrees and translated negative 12, 3, and 10 units in XA, YA, and ZA respectively. Define the transformation matrix T, then find P2 relative to A if P1 relative to A equals to negative 2, 6, and negative 5 transpose. So I want you to solve this on your own. I'm going to pause for a few seconds. Please pause this video. And once you're done solving this exercise, you can resume the video so that you can see the answer. Okay, assuming that you are done with solving this exercise, I'm going to go ahead and start showing you the answer. So uh, the first thing we need to find is the transformation matrix, which is rotation about x. Since the rotation here is about x-axis, that means Rx. And by 45 degrees, so that's rotation about x by 45 degrees. So rotation about x means that the first element is 1, and then zeros in the same row and same column. And then we have cosine, 
negative sine and sine and cosine of 45 degrees. Okay? And then the translation portion is QA, which is given in this case negative 12, 3, and 10. So I put these here. And then the last row is 0, 0, 0, and 1. Okay? Now I'm ready to construct my, my equation to find P2 relative to A and 1, which equals to transformation matrix times P1 relative to A and 1. Okay? I substitute the transformation here as we found it earlier and then p1 relative to a that's given directly here okay and then i add this one so that we can have consistent multiplication i do this multiplication and i come up with the final answer that you can see here uh, i'm sorry this is not the final answer the final answer is only the first three elements after you disregard that one okay so that would be my final answer P2 relative to A equals to these 3 by 1 vector elements or elements of this vector.